Hey guys, it's Coach Damon, and today we're going to bring you five more sneaky point guard tricks. Now we did a series previously where we talked about lateral space creation, protecting with the offhand, using your eyes to be deceptive, and today we're going to bring you five more of those quick tips that you can work to add to your game literally today. If you're playing pickup today, it's things that you can try out. It's very simple, but it's also very high level and very effective. Now our first, as opposed to being with a live dribble, we're actually going to talk about triple threat. A lot of high school guys and even college guys, when they catch, they immediately go straight from their hip to their knee and they go from spot one to spot two over and over and over again when they rip out a triple threat. Tip one is going to be about us reading the hands. So if I'm an elite player and I'm in triple threat, I need to be able to read his hands and beat his feet. And what I mean by that is if I catch and his hands are low, if I go straight from point one to two, he's a good defender. And even if he doesn't get a steal, at the worst, that's going to be a deflection. So when I catch, I need to be able to see his hands, and if his hands are low, I want to go straight over top. And if I go over top, one, I've sealed him. Two, there's no way he can get that deflection. And three, as we go the opposite direction, if you see here, a lot of times if refs see hands in here, it's going to be an immediate foul call. So I've created three advantages by simply reading his hands. Now at the same time, if his hands go high, I'm going to go low, so hands are high, if I see them there, then I'm going to go low and take that ball below. So it's crucial for me to be able to see his hands. Now I know your first question is going to be, well, what if he's a good defender and he's got one hand high and one hand low? Well, that's where I have to be an elite player. So let's say he's got one high and one low. He's a good defender. Well, I can catch here and I can start high and get low. Or if I'm going the opposite direction, I may be low and then come over top. But regardless of where his hands are, I have to have the ability to read and go opposite. Our second tip for today is going to be fake a pass to make a pass. Now there are a lot of coaches across the country and around the world who teach this concept and there aren't a lot of players that buy into it. But if you watch guys who really do buy into faking passes before they pass, shoot, or drive, it's nearly always effective because the defensive player has to react to that fake pass. So when we talk about faking a pass, if the ball is reversed to me, I may fake low before I swing. Or he may fake to me before he throws inside. But I can get into the habit of where every time, if I'm not going straight to the shot, faking, and then pass, again, the defender has to respect that. Because if they don't, the ball is immediately going to be swung. Let's say the ball comes to me, and that defender doesn't respect this, then it's going right back to him. So I fake a pass to make a pass. One way you can very quickly work on this to get started with the workout is let's say Coach and I are here together is we can just go back and forth. Fake, make it, fake it, make it, fake it, make it. Over and over and over again, we are faking that pass, getting the defense to move, and then making that pass. It's a game of milliseconds and a game of inches. All it takes is that little shift for me to create an opportunity for a teammate. In our first series, we talked about being deceptive with your eyes and how I can look to the rim and that may be all it takes for this defender to rise and give me a driving lane. Today we're going to talk about hand deception. Again from series one we talked a lot about being able to protect with that off hand and be very active with it. I can also be deceptive with that off hand by faking a pickup. So let's bring again something from series one. Let's say I go into that lateral space creation and when I get to this space if I bring that right hand right to the ball he thinks that I'm either going to pick it up, so this is almost just like me faking a pass, or if I'm going to shoot, or he thinks I'm going to shoot. So if I go here and he rises because he thinks I'm going to shoot, if I'm here, he rises, then I can attack on by. That hand comes right to the ball, and because of that, he thinks it's a pass or a shot, and I'm able to react out. It's nothing quick, it's nothing explosive, it's just a quick hand deception that can create a huge advantage for me as an offensive player. Our fourth tip is going to be a crucial one for point guards handling the ball at the end of quarters, the end of halves, or at the end of the game when your team is up and teams are pressuring you. Now everybody's aware of a five second call. What a lot of players don't understand is what that rule actually means. So a lot of guys, they'll catch it, they'll dribble, they'll pick it up, and they try to get it out of their hands as quickly as they can because they think that that five second call is going to happen. Now the way the rule actually works is when I catch the basketball, and I'm facing pressure, that five second count is going to start. As soon as I put the ball on the floor, and I don't even have to break this arm's length, 
the five second call starts again. So I've got a second five seconds as soon as I start dribbling. Now if I pick the basketball up again, that count starts all over again. So if I've caught it, I've got basically till four and a half seconds, and then four and a half seconds, and then four and a half more seconds. Now obviously you don't want to challenge it, a ref may be given a quick call, but just keep in mind, if you see that count, as soon as you pick the ball up, the count's gonna start again. So if you understand the game and you're a student of the game, you know what that rule is and you can really manipulate that defense without being forced into five second calls. Our last trick is gonna be the self back door. Now as soon as you heard back door or you saw it, you may think that we were talking about on the wing and back door cutting. This is actually gonna be on a baseline out of bounds. Now a lot of teams, with their big or whoever is guarding the inbounder, he stays with his back to the basket so he can see the entire court and he can take away anything that's coming to the basket. Now if you're confident in your ability to put the ball on time on target, you can take advantage of that, especially if you're getting right to the end of a five second count or if it's early in the game and you haven't done it. So with the self back door, when he's here, I'm gonna make sure that I stay behind the line and I'm going right off of his back and then stepping in where I'm gonna have a wide open layup to the rim. Now it's crucial to make sure that when you do throw it off of his back, that you get both feet in before you catch the ball. So if I'm here and I have this one and I'm just picking it up, it's gonna be out of bounds. So I gotta make sure that both feet are on the floor before I step in and finish. Now our last thing with this, now I've just been tossing it off a coach's back because we're demonstrating it. In a game, you can't be afraid to throw it hard off of that defender's back. So you wanna to try to throw it so that it comes back to you. If you just toss it, there's a chance that it could bounce in a different direction or he could quickly turn around so you're hard off of his back, two points of contact, and then a wide open layup. Just like in our first series, these are things that you could do today. If you're playing pickup, you can go work on reading those hands or the eye deception or fake a pass to make a pass. But the more high level basketball you watch, you're gonna start seeing that these things happen a lot. And if you add these little elements into your already developing game, it's gonna only exponentially help how quickly you're improving.